There's a new tool in Adobe InDesign that will change everything about how you build layouts. And in this video, I'll show you how to use it. Flex Layout is a new feature in InDesign that lets you structure layouts using containers to align and justify content, set direction, and space objects accordingly. Follow along in this tutorial as I go over some of the powerful properties in the Flex Layout panel to create an alternate layout seamlessly without manual adjustment. So let's jump in and get started. I'm working on a project for a slide deck presentation and currently I have four images placed across the bottom of the page. Now if I wanted to create an alternate layout, something like having the four images below stacked over two columns on the right side of the page, it would require manual adjustments. This is where the new Flex Layout tool comes in handy. To access the Flex Layout panel, make your way up to Window, and then choose Flex Layout. Now you can see I already have mine docked on the right hand side. You can also find the Flex Layout options in the Properties panel. If I select all the content on the page, you'll see in the Properties panel that the Flex Layout option is visible. Now before I create the Flex Layout, I want to duplicate the page so I work non-destructively. So I'll make my way over to Pages, right click this current page, and I'll duplicate the spread. Now before applying the Flex Layout, it's important to note that this feature reflows and adjusts the spacing of the content. It doesn't resize it. So the best practice is resizing the content before you apply the Flex Layout. So I'm going to select all four of these images and the corresponding text frames above. I'll hold Shift Command on a Mac, that's Shift Control on Windows, and drag in the upper left hand corner of the group and snap it maybe to the second column like so. I'm just shrinking it down because I want to compensate for the images to fit on the right hand side over two columns. And now I can go ahead and create my flex layout. So with all four images selected, I'm going to make my way back to the flex layout panel and I'm going to click on create flex layout. You can now see that all four of the images and the text frames are contained inside of a container. I can adjust the container by clicking the upper left hand corner of the container and dragging it up so it snaps to the top margin and the left side of that column. I'm also going to snap the bottom center handle of the container to the bottom margin. You can also select the alignment of the content within the container. You can see that here. The first option is aligned to top, second is center, and the third is aligned to bottom. Let's leave it on aligned to top for now, and I'll adjust that shortly. To the right of the alignment options are values for the width and height of the container. Because the container has already been adjusted when we dragged it, there's no need to change the values in this example. However, just know this is where you would adjust those settings. Next, we're gonna click the justification dropdown, and this one is important because you can see currently it's set to space between. Choosing an option here will depend on your specific layout. However, in this example, let's choose flex start. This aligns the row to the start of the flex layout and aligns the items to the start of the row. Next, we can choose the direction of the flex layout. Currently, it's set to flex row, and you can see that here because the content is in a row within the container. You'll also notice that the content is cut off within the container as well. So in this case, I would have to adjust the container. You also have the option to set this as a reverse row and that just reverses the content within that container. The next one would be columns. So this is the one we want. I'm gonna click column since we have two columns in the layout to the right. Now this will create one column within the container to ensure it creates two columns within the frame, I'm going to click on this wrap icon here. It says wrap content. Go ahead and click that. Now you can see it's over two columns. Now that the flex layout has the direction and wrap applied, it's time to adjust the spacing. The spacing or padding fields will be set to zero. You can see they're set to zero all the way around. And currently I have all the values linked together. However, you can unlink them by clicking this chain icon. You can adjust these settings by increasing the padding and you can see that the adjustment to the spacing within that container is increasing as I'm increasing the values. 
and decreasing as I'm decreasing the values. In this specific case, I'll leave the padding or spacing set to zero. Instead, we'll adjust the horizontal and vertical spacing fields below. Again, you can increase this by clicking the up arrow and you can see that the horizontal spacing is being adjusted. Now I'm gonna set this to 56 pixels and I can also adjust the vertical spacing. You can see I'm increasing it one by one by clicking the up arrow or I can set a value by typing it in and in this case, I'll set the vertical spacing to 38 pixels. Now the last thing I wanna do is adjust the alignment. Remember, I touched on that briefly earlier in the tutorial. We can adjust the alignment here. I want to set this to align to the center of the container. And you can see just like that, I used the flex layout to readjust and reflow the content in a layout to create an alternate layout. And because I have some content on the pasteboard here, I can drag that onto the page. And now I have a secondary layout that I can present to the client. And you can see I have my first example and the second example. Another cool feature of the Flex Layout tool is that you can reposition content within the container. For example, in the Flex Layout in this tutorial, I'll click on the number two group and drag it to the top of the second column. This gives me another layer of control within the Flex Layout. So what are your thoughts on the new Flex Layout feature in Adobe InDesign? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I hope you found this video helpful. Leave a like and hit the subscribe button to stay up to date with all my latest videos. If you'd like to learn more about InDesign, I put together this playlist to get you started. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.